Hello, welcome to step one, foundation of a high functioning mindset. So we're going to talk about how to uh, clear your head and get back on track mentally when something goes wrong. So I'm going to start with something I call my prescription. Uh, I believe at my core, like truly everything that I, I hang my hat on is that if you were tall enough and you could see far enough, you would understand everything you needed to in order to live a free and fully conscious life and that you could choose to gain from every life experience, no matter whether you thought it was positive, negative, or otherwise. So there are, are tons of different like platitudes and teachings about this, such as the basic belief in God, the idea of everything happens for a reason, God works in mysterious ways, there's never a problem without also a gift in it, you know, things like that. They, they all lead to the same notion, right? The one that's cemented in my world and I got from a very specific source with, is, says this, that I will look upon every circumstance in my life as a direct interaction of God in my soul. It all means the same thing, no matter what it is. But if it's some external version and some connection to that, that's what we're hanging our head on. And that's what we're really going to focus on. So for those of you that do identify with some version of this idea and believe that it's true for you, then this actually answers the universal question of why does bad stuff happen? So now emotionally, we just can't always switch that on, right? Like stuff happens and we're humans and we go through the whole lot of it. But seeing the good in any situation is very much a muscle that we can exercise and grow and build. So the question is how? I'm going to give you the basics here. Okay. Since we believe that everything has a reason and is ultimately for the good of us and the universe, then it follows that if you are off in some way, whether it's emotionally, psychologically, mentally, or and in most cases, even I would contend physically, then you are just too zoomed in on something. It could be that you're too focused on what somebody did. It could be something that happened to you or maybe a loved one, or even something as simple as stubbing your toe. You feel off, you're too zoomed in on it. And here's what needs to happen, right? This is, this is where you get to flex at. You have to start by recognizing that it's true. You are too zoomed in on the problem, the pain, the moment, whatever it is. Just start by going, okay, something's off. I don't, th this can't be exactly what should be happening. So recognize I'm too zoomed in. Then you back up, basically take a step back. You, what we call gain perspective. And you look for the cause of the zooming in. So say you said something like, oh, I stubbed my toe and this is the worst pain ever. Okay, that, that right there, that thought about it being so horrible, that thinking about it, that's what caused you the zoom. And what you need to do is just relinquish it. Do an ELSA and let it go, okay? Now, it's not always easy to do, but just do at a logical level. Just go, okay, I can't, that, that happened, I'm just gonna let go. Then you decide in that moment that whatever is going on, it's for your best and highest good. Now, in that moment, you're, especially if you stub your toe or something significantly serious happens in your world, you're, you're not going to understand exactly what it is that's good in that situation. But we want you to logically accept that it is for your good, even though you may not know how. It's, we'll get to the, the next step. But in that first one, just go, okay, I don't see it yet, but I'm going to get there. I know this has something, there's some gift here for me. Okay. That's what you have to do. And that's the, the step most people aren't able to do is just step back enough to go, I'm having this thought. I had this experience. I need to recognize there's something good in it for me. So I'm just going to let go and figure out and accept there's something good. Now, once you've done that, you just ask yourself some great questions and search for any evidence or ideas on how this could actually be good for you or serve you in some way. Um, I learned this whole list in high school about I never see failure as failure, but as an opportunity to start again. And Tom Hopkins has this great list of five or six, or maybe by now there's 20 or 30 of them. Um, it could just be some version of that, like an opportunity to start again. It could just be that you need to learn some humility. Uh, it could just be that you're, you trust in your belief that the universe is a good place. And it could be something even in your darkest moment that you go, you know what? I may not see it for minutes, weeks, or even years, but there's something here for me. So you just trust and you, you accept that there is something, whether you find it now or not, that's the key. Then, you know, it, it's really simple that <laughs> if you believe that something is good for you, if you believe there's an answer, if you believe something, you will find it. It's just, it's just the nature of the world is when you believe something is true, it is true. And likewise, if you believe something is false, it tends to be false, whether you can or you can't, 
whatever you believe, you're right. So when you trust that you will find the answer to this, that's all you need to start with. Then you get to play with it. Start practicing, right? Like um, oftentimes something like something as simple as stubbing your toe, you can kind of have this thought process. I'll run through an example. Uh, since I stub my toe and I can't let go of this idea that it's the worst thing that ever happened to me. I mean, okay, maybe I'm being a little bit dramatic. Let me just kind of back up and maybe it's a great reminder to lessen the drama I keep bringing into my life because it's not that big of a deal. Um, it could mean maybe I haven't arranged my furniture in an ideal way and then I, I really haven't thought about the structure of my house and my situation, feng shui or otherwise. Um, it might be something that, and this is something that actually is a real, ex real experience for me, which was I keep walking around a pile of laundry and that's why I accidentally kicked my dresser and stubbed my toe, which meant I needed to kind of finish my chores of laundry this time and every time which might be a visual symptom of my procrastination in my household chores, which does kind of shed some light on the fact that I kind of do have some procrastination issues in other areas of my life, which I can honestly and ultimately say leads to me removing procrastination from all areas of my life. Now, okay, that is a long walk down a short pier, but if you start at the beginning of this prescription and you just follow these simple steps through the exercise and you, you strengthen that muscle, you squeeze it, and you, you exercise that muscle, you'll be amazed at how strong it becomes. You will find answers to, hey, what can I get out of this situation? It, it's not that hard. Um, here's the thing. Once you find an idea that has some merit for you, write it down and write down any supporting evidence that goes with it. This is, I don't have time to go into it here, but putting pen to paper and writing down your thoughts, your ideas, there's magic in that. When you go, hey, this bad thing happened, I'm gonna reclassify it as bad, it's really not that bad, there's something good, it turns out this was good for me, I'm gonna take some notes, so you literally put pen to paper, that will solidify it and your mind will start building that muscle for you almost automatically. You gotta have to do it a few times yourself, but that's the, the process of building that muscle, okay? And that's really it. So let me do a quick recap of what this looks like. First of all, you believe in good. Where, whatever your version of that is, it's fine. Uh, recognize that if you were tall enough and could see far enough, we could see with no fear or doubt that the universe is all in on the idea of being good for us and itself, despite what stories we tend to tell ourselves in those moments. And when we're feeling bad, off, or hurt, just recognize logically, it's just not true. You're just merely too zoomed in. So then you take a step back, you back up, you gain some perspective, recognize it's not true, acknowledge that your focus is what's wrong, not the situation, just your focus. Then relinquish, let it go logically, just logically, just be open to an alternative view. Decide that it actually does serve you. And once you've decided that it was, start asking questions. Find out how this might actually be true for you. Um, how does stubbing my toe serve me? What does catching every red light help me? Uh, how does losing a loved one benefit my life? And what ways can I gain from that? What good does maybe a divorce bring me? So after you've asked these questions, you've got some ideas, you've got some evidence of, oh yeah, actually it does, you know, the, the marriage was bad or the, the laundry was in my way, so I stubbed my toe, so I've got to stop procrastinating. Whatever it is, write that evidence down. Again, this is very much a muscle that you can exercise on your own. And of course, there's always tips, tricks, and hacks to advance your growth in this area, but you got to start on your own, right? And this is just the prescription on what it takes to get a grip on your mindset. The next session, we're going to actually talk about the critical need to clear your mental clutter and why that's so important. As always, I love your feedback and questions. I hope this gives you a small glimpse into how to shift your mindset into a positive and really flex that, that mindset muscle that you have. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks.